Hi, I'm Keegan, and this is A Bunch of Gamers. This is our 109th episode of Werewolf the Apocalypse, 20th Anniversary Edition, The War Council. I'm going to go around and have my players introduce themselves. I'm Tyler, and I play Kyle, also known as Guards of the Low. He's a Philodox of the Children of Gaia. Hi, I'm Sam. I play Cora. She's an Aruna in the Geta Fenris. Hi, I'm Sean. I play Zeb, speaks in sweet whispers. He is a Theurge of the Silent Striders. Hello, my name's Thomas. I play Dimitri Howells in Memory, Lupus Galliard of the Bone Nars. Hi, my name is George. I am playing William Groves Matrices. He is a Fostern Arun of the Glasswalkers. Last time, the packs ended up in a mirror realm. The mirror realm was what would happen if the War of Rage never occurred. To escape this realm and return to the Apocalypse War, the two packs were forced to do the unthinkable. Forced to reignite the War of Rage so that this realm would become in alignment with their own. Throwing out the accusations using grains of truth, the packs riled up the Garu to turn upon their fairer brothers. Though Stephen Town Hall in this mirror realm stood against them, with Kyle guards the low murdering him with his own claws. The realm shattered, and the Pax fell out of the realm, greeted by Stephen, confused by Kyle's tears. The Pax decided then that it was time to visit their totems and find spiritual guidance in these difficult times. After your return, the two Pax begin to move into the spiritual realm of their totems. The Elomans find themselves in the Great Desert. Fomori's Bane finds themselves in the forest by the river, each one taking a step closer to where their totem presides. The cave before Fomori's Bane, the oasis before the Ill Omens, the stretch of a bear as it gives a great yawn in the silent flutter of wings as the great owl lands upon the palm tree and looks down. The two spirits, separated by time and space, still seem to speak in unison to any who could hear them. Welcome, Welcome back, back, my children. My children. I, see I see you have a heavy, have heart. A heavy heart. What, what has happened? You know we went to Flux. Fair nods. And on our way back home, we were thrown, I guess, into a, a realm that was like a mirror to our own. And to be frank, it was great, <laughs> but we knew that it was something that couldn't last. And we basically had to destroy the piece that was in that realm to come home because it was, I mean, it was fake. It wasn't real. I see. What did you have to do to escape? We had to, in our own time, with friends of ours, <laughs> essentially restart the War of Rage. In this mirror realm, they never happened. As Owl waits for the Ill Omen's answer. We perpetuated something terrible, Great One. Uh, coming back from Flux, we were stuck in a mirror realm of this place. The glorious nature of it was that the War of Rage not occurred, and there was great cooperation between the Pharah and the Gru, and indeed, creation was quite different, and maybe even felt like we were winning. To come home to where we needed to be, and our sacred duty, we perpetuated the War of Rage there. It was shockingly easy to divide our people with truth. It was sobering to, again, while it was not our home, to face against people we cared about and kill them, knowing that we had to break from a place that could very well have been a reward to come back where we had to be. I believe it is especially emotionally exhausting for all of us and our friends. Something so terrible that we didn't quite think we'd face when first it was just discovering the infinite of the wild, and instead it being very, very different. I can't speak for those here, but it was especially jarring for myself for what I believed was a gift from Flux. I was told otherwise by everyone around me, and I was sure of it. I did what my Alpha told me to do, though, and we're back where I guess we belong now. And the gift that 
I believed was rightfully ours was not a gift at all. It was just another stepping stone, another trial and tribulation in our life. Bear and Owl seem to speak once again, simultaneously, through time and space. I know you hurt because you have the benefit of hindsight, but I ask you, living through it, why do you focus on your own pain? What of the Pharaoh? What of their pain? They didn't experience it in some realm that never was. No, they have to experience and live with the crimes that happened in this world. They experienced it twice from your eyes. To heal to this heal divide, this divide. You, must you must stop focusing stop on your focusing own, on guilt own guilt and discover and how to heal the hurts of the Pharaoh and, and how the Garu's own, own hatred and sense of superiority fundamentally, fundamentally poisons, poisons them from within, them within and makes, and makes them, them monsters. That is why here and now I'm standing before you, Owl. I want to mend the rift between Garu and Pharaoh. It may not be in my lifetime now, but I want to make progress and befriend the Pharaoh as if it was that mere realm. Perhaps you can get them to be allies, but never expect them to be friends. There is much weight on their shoulders, and it will take many lifetimes to clean the slate of your ancestors and even some of your own actions. Unthinking, uncaring, throughout the ages. Bear turns to Fomori's Bane. What else happened? Kyle, you barely can stand. Steven has always been a champion of the weak, the deserving, the anyone he could help. And he looked to me for help, and I had I had to stand against him, knowing I was wrong. I I understand your words, and I it is just too fresh for me to look at objectively. I understand. Steven is like a brother to you. Growing up together even before the change. But think on this when you when the wound has scabbed a little. Steven, though the Garo, is not unique. There would have been others like him. Speak to the Galliards if you need proof, but think on how many old songs there are of Garo who stood against the war of rage. Can you name one of them? Their names have been lost to history. Scrubbed away. I do not think that they would care. Only that they stood to do what was right, regardless of the renown that it brings. Stephen is part of the great camp that goes beyond the borders of tribe, of auspice, and of breed. I will just nod and sit. As the two spirits seem to speak in unison once again, if, if it is anything, anything like this time, time there were Garu who stood by, by, by and watched it happen. happen. How many, many Garu do you suppose, you suppose watched from the sidelines from this world? world? How many do you think stood from the sidelines only to wag their finger after the war ended to say we were right and never put their convictions on the line? How many Garu like that still exist? What are the chances of the worm being defeated? If so many, so many stand in silence, stand in, silence in, the face of in the face of atrocity, only to wag their only finger, wag their finger and, disappointment and disappointment after nothing after can be done. Can Rest, be here, done. For Rest here for some time. It is clear that you need it. And so, you have some time to train, some time to strengthen yourselves, and to regain what you had lost in the realm of flux. Once again, as per the end of our last session, you were full on willpower and gnosis. And I believe you all rolled 1d10 last week, or two weeks ago, to note your rage. It is a few days before the concordant, and you've noticed a trickle of Garu starting to come in. A few packs here and there. Five, six. Gaia's Inferno from the north. The Garu that helped you with Pueblo have finally arrived, but they bring most of their sept as well. Trailing behind them are an additional ten Red Talons. A night before the Concordant begins, Atiana guts the weak, and the Firestarters have arrived. As have Roger laughs with the low and Heather speaks to power. More continue to trickle in. 
as several silent striders even begin to arrive. Strikes with Silence has arrived, House of the Departed, Soul Watcher, and even Wind's Fickle Step have all come. Malcolm kind of walks up to you guys. Hey, everyone. Good to see you again, Malcolm. Wish it was under better circumstances. At least something's being done. True. That's true. Hell, even Regender's trying to help out the best he can. Oh? Well, he's banned from Sept Grounds under penalty of death. But he's not banned from Cripple Creek. He's staying in Divide for till the Concordant. He's keeping in contact with his Sept. And they'll tell him what the plan is. He has agreed to go with whatever the plan is. He won't try and lead. He won't do anything. He's trying to make amends. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, maybe you guys will get to see him after everything's done. It would be nice, though, uh... I won't hold my breath. He may not want to stick around, but he I'm glad he still cares about this place enough to to bother making amends. Agreed. Agreed. Even just nodded in respect to me. Didn't even have the courage to speak up as Malcolm gives a smile. As you guys are kind of hanging out and you hear a familiar voice. Hey, hey, how's it going? As you see the filthy Ragabosh rubbing his greasy hands all over his grime-covered pants. Cora, as he slaps her hand, and there is a, an audible slap and almost stick noise, as it feels like you're gripping all too weak Velcro in a firm vice grip hand. Roger, it is fantastic to see you again. <laughs> yeah, how y'all doing? Oh, uh, Zeb, right? That's right. It's good to As see you. As he starts again. rubbing his hands all over his pants, and then he comes in, grabs the hand, firm handshake, grabs the elbow kind of thing. You know, do you ever sit in gum? That's what it feels like on your shirt shirt arm. <laughs> Have I met this one before? As he looks at Dimitri. I don't believe so. We've got and another new one as well. Yeah, yeah, and I definitely haven't met that one. This is by my pack mates, House of Memory and William Gross Matrices. Nice to meet both of you as he starts rubbing his hands once again all over his grimy pants. I'll look down at his hand, look back up with him without moving my arm, and just go, it's a pleasure. Oh, I get it. You're a hugger type. Ah, uh, come in here as he... <laughs> Cora's just gonna laugh because the same thing happened with her. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, as he pats you and you feel your shirt lift up slightly with every pat. And you, as he turns to Dimitri... Same ritual, and, hand sticks out. And Demetri will give him like a, a handshake and say, nice to meet you too, Roger. Yeah, what is this? Oh, right, Roger, last of the low, Athro of the final howl, or Bonar of the final howl. Uh, Dimitri howls in memory, Fostern. Oh. William grows matrices, Fostern. Nice to meet both of you. You ready to to do some things? As you hear Malcolm going, as long as you don't shoot a shotgun in the front of a bunch of homids to scare them out. That was one time. One's enough. Anyway, it's good to meet all of you. We've been bumping into these chuckleheads for a couple of years now. Yeah, it's been a bit, huh? Yeah. Bumped into Zeb maybe, what, two and a half, three years ago now? I reckon it's been about that. Yeah, good times. Have you guys heard anything about snow? Only that no one's heard anything. Uh, including us. We were hoping maybe you bumped into her. You guys seem to bump into important people all the time. It's odd, but yeah. I'm actually getting kind of worried about her. Yeah, me too. Real worried, actually. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, will you keep us in the loop if you hear anything? Yeah, still. We will. Uh... And Malcolm, you sure you haven't seen her? Told you I hadn't seen her. Anyway, I'm gonna go mingle. That troublemaker Steven lives here, right? I've never actually, you know, had a good chance to hang out with him at his home. So, that'll be fun. Yeah, he's the best. Sell yourself there, short bud, as he gives you like a little chest pump, and then once again, short kind of the hand. <laughs> I think you two would get on. Usually do at the moot. 
Steven can really put him away when you give him a fetish flask. He's, he's a fun time, definitely. And you hear Heather? Yeah, when Roger's a fun time, I have to clean up his mess. Like the time I had to apologize to Agatha because Roger let a bunch of Cleoth into Europe without paying a talent and then tried to claim that they just ran without him. Who would do that? Oh, no. Roger. As she just laughs, I'm giving you all a bunch of shit. It's been too long. It's been way too long. Too much stuff has happened. Final scale approaches Zeb, gives a nod. How do the winds speak, my sibling? Troubled as ever, kin. We are recently back here from Flux. I'm still trying to find the news. Lots of movement here now. The news will find us swiftly, I fear. Whether for good or for ill. It flies swifter than the Korax. And faster than any Strider could hope to match. Though we do give it a run for its money. I believe we do. Have you heard anything on the long and open road? Oh, many things. I've heard... I've heard tale that a mad leech in Los Angeles is screaming about how the sky will have a drop of blood in it. Something about their ancient gods rising soon. I bumped into a mage in Seattle. Something about a station in the Umbra, the High Umbra, crumbling. It had an interesting name, Joystep. Not highly familiar. Neither I, but the mages seem to be put on edge about it. And, well, that woman Appleton that you'd all met? Indeed. Making some splashes. She has been trying to cure us still using her odd powers, but she also got into a battle with a worm mage, her and her group, and they defeated it over in San Diego. You shocked me about that. Appleton, I am not shocked. Two of us, two of us had already faced her and dealt with her deprivation. There is another of that ilk that we've heard about now here that had reached across the second veil had caused some of the problems that occurred here before with Carson faces the storm. I have no love for the namers, but at least they had the good sense to try and stop those that were infested with the worm. Their places of power falling, though, well, Hebrews Falls. True, but when their places of power go, they try and find ours. They do indeed. Anyway, have I, as he looks over, I have not met this one, as he looks over at William. Oh, indeed not. Final scales, Rhea. This is one of my new pack mates. William Gross Matrices, Foster of the Glass Walkers, Arun. Final scale gives a bow, a bow and raises up. I would shake your hand, but I did do know Roger has been nearby. Try as I might, Roger does not do well with boundaries. No, he's a ragabosh. And a bone gnar one at that. While I have you, there's one other question that has, and maybe you and I even discussed it before. When we came back here and the new Elder Storm Chaser arrived, very little is known about him at all. I maybe Wind's Fickle Step, and I had spoke about him before too. I'm still on the lookout, but I would pass the same to you, Rhea. I have not heard Only of him before he arrived here, though some spirits sang highly of him when asked, but no Garu that I know of knows of him. Except the ones here and the elders here. The elders here tell the same stories as the spirits. Very little deviation. It's very odd. Well, I will keep an ear to the ground as ever and hope to hear more. I almost feel disconnected. I've been away from the message so long. Perhaps our two packs can run together at some point. Or even our three. I do forget that you are all not the same pack. You do seem come stuck together like glue. A big family for the time. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Either way, I see that the Gaia's Inferno is here. I think I will step away for a bit. I had a philosophical debate with their Alpha several months ago. Uh, Last time we saw snow, in fact. I know there's great concern for bloody snow. I have never met them. She is one who puts others in their place. 
I think you need to narrow down the list from that description, sir. Hey, Malcolm! As you see Malcolm just kind of glare, she's an Arun. And a foot and a half shorter than you? As Malcolm just shrugs, get a Fenris Arun. It's all there needs to be said. Amen. As you continue on, it's late at night, and this the veil is starting to groan under all the Garu that are here. Carmen drives into the grouping and starts calling, asking for Ragabosh to run into the city and do crimes on the opposite side to draw away the police as there are now well over a hundred Garu here. Damn. And then it is finally the night of the Concordant. As I had said earlier, Tatiana guts the week, the fire starters, the final howl minus bloody snow, the entirety of the Sept of the Five Mirrors, the entirety of the Sept of the Desert Snow, all of the Sept of the Unified Heart with the exception of Final Days, the entirety of the Sept of the Steel Mountain, and Gazes from Afar. You also see the entirety of the Sept of the Thunderclap, the Sept of the Frozen Hills, Ragna of Quickwire, Louis Earthwalker, and the like have returned from their wanderings to come here to answer the call of the Concordant. Nearly 150, if not 200 Garu of every tribe, breed, and auspice as rites are performed to dim the firelights as to not make the mountain seem ablaze. And the moot begins with a long call from Remembers the Hurt. The howl is the song of the Garu, for it is the song of the Padded Shadow, a Garu who moved here and there. Padded Shadow, who stood for Gaia. Padded Shadow, who hunted the worm. Padded Shadow, whose brother fell and became a monster. Padded Shadow, who killed them for Gaia, who wept 10,000 tears for his fallen comrade, and who returned to the sept with his brother's skull as a warning to all who defile Gaia. You must go now and kill your brothers, kill your sisters, rend your siblings, for the Black Spiral Dancers are still you, an image of you, of your failures. Correct the mistake. For that is what the Garu must do this night. Once done, the Garu, of course, begin to speak amongst themselves, grumbling, when Binds the Darkness steps forward. You have heard, there is a hive that needs dealing with. We do not know the numbers, but we do know that they must be vanquished, for they continue their corrupt ways. Before we begin, who here wishes to use this fight as an opportunity to climb in rank? Uh, Cora will speak up, and I, I request to do that. Cora Two Hearts requests her right challenge. Very well, Cora Two Hearts. I have heard the tale sung around the fire since your departure of when the spirals when your rank challenge when you f went into the spirals den how you saw a metis there very well then i place this upon you cora two hearts rescue every single metis pup that has not danced the spiral at the hive and save at least five of their kinfolk who are captured it is not the pup's fault that they were born to corrupt parents. And the nation requires new troops, and we are desperate. As you hear a couple of talons and several Fianna give a growl and a howl of disdain at this challenge. Do you accept the challenge to become Athro, Cora Two Hearts? I do. Very well, Cora Two Hearts. As you hear a couple Cleoth, you see a Cleoth step forward. I will do it! I am Thomas Renz the Beast. Give me t a chance to show my claws. 
as one of the other elders steps forward. Very well. Kill a spiral of higher rank than yourself with your own claws. Bring back proof, and you will be given the rank of Foster Warrior. A couple others call out, and the ranks challenges are issued. It is time that we think about what we must do. There are several here who have entered the hive, though it has been some time since they have. We ask that any who have entered the hive come and speak forward before the concordant so that all may hear it, and thus we can continue to plan. All right, uh, Cora will step forward. <laughs> we recognize Cora Two Hearts of the Geta Fenris. Speak to the Concordant. During my time at the Hive, I witnessed the I witnessed the transporting of people, um, as well as the Metis that were born there, and people kin being forced to take Bomori. There were quite a few from <laughs> my eyes, and it seemed like the whole place was built for only them to know how to get around. How did you enter? I entered through a janitor's closet uh, in Stallion Steve's, the casino. As you hear one of the red hat talents, then what do we wait for? Let us enter this. Kill any who step before us. Rend their flesh and let the delirium take the rest and let the Uran use their weaver gifts to shatter their false eyes so that there is no evidence of our passing. Let the Hamids rationalize this as some kind of bomb, I believe is the word you use. As you hear several dissenting voices. I actually think that we need to go in with as much information shared amongst us all so that we can all make the most impact. The Red Talon gives a howl. Very well. We will listen to the ape chatter, but we now have an entrance. If there are more, then we will attack more. But that does not change the fact that we can leave ragged flesh in our wake and kill more of the worm bestial creatures than was originally expected. We do have an entrance. However, as I said, it is a janitor's closet. A hundred of us is, are not going to fit into a janitor's closet unless we line up one by one. Then make the entrance larger. Use gifts to rend the earth. We have elders here. Rip it open. Let part of the building collapse. Crush the worms beneath it. Give us an opening large enough for an army. And any stuck in the rubble who see a Krynos crush their heads under heel. Agno Quickwire is waiting patiently. Is there anything else? The Elder asks. No. As you step down, Ragna Quickwire explains that there is an entrance in the mine and that the mine seems to be, uh, the mine has an entrance. It's towards the bottom of the mine. It is unclear if the mine has been hit with any kind of spiritual interference to make them ignore some of the spirals or not, or if the spirals have fake work IDs, but they have checked, when they checked two years ago, this was not a subsidiary of Pentex, which rules out any sort of Pentex authorization for spirals. She also mentions that uh, ambushes tended to come from something called the Roaming Mule Inn, and that that also could be an entrance to the hive, given that spirals would likely use that as their point of entrance. She then starts listing off the chemicals that the mine uses. She already notices the confusion on nearly everyone's face, but that, so she goes, what you need to know is these chemicals are fat soluble. If you touch them, they will enter your skin and they connect to your bones and they disintegrate you from the inside out. The mine is saturated with it in places, and I have no doubt the spirals have made this place similar. When we did our raid, our paws touched it, and while we were in breed form, we felt woozy and blisters formed on our feet. It is best 
that we stay in any form but our breed form, though this could limit us as if there are any low ceiling areas, it will limit Krinos. And we know for a fact that many spirals are resistant to these kinds of chemicals. And this could be a hindrance to us. They have also had over two years to build. As she steps down, Louis Earthwalker starts listing off what he knows, including entrance, the entrance that he saw. He also mentioned that he noticed one of the spirals that he has been battling with, Onyx Claws of the Worm, was seen at the old railroad depot and the old mine milling station in Victor, Colorado. And that that could be something else that they use. Perhaps spirits could be summoned to try and guard over a wide swath of area as the mine is between three unincorporated towns. They nod as all the information is given. And finally, it is called out, Aruns, meet with your packs. Strategize and strategize with other Aruns. Aruns who wish to present will present with either themselves or their galliards. Once they present, the Arun will have to justify their plans as they will be questioned by all the Ragabosh. The Ragabosh will seek to find holes in the plan and see if the plan stands to scrutiny as Gaia intended. What do y'all want to do? You can collaborate with others. You can start enacting some ideas of your own. We need the names of as many of the spirals as we can think of, or as many as we can gather. If we can find the names, I can find more names with one of my gifts, and then the others can track them. So we can find and see perhaps there are other entrances or other small enclaves nearby. I feel like that would that would work to get us some more information on how to get in. That would be step one. How's memory? I want you to go around and start listening to both their their tales being spun, the names being brought up. Go and try to gather what you can. For as much as I would prefer that you go and see what some of the plans are that the Arun are coming up with for now. If you have some of your own, perhaps inject it there. I don't necessarily think that the three of us will come up with one stronger than the other, but I'd like to hear what they're thinking. Same thing, if there are names or targets or otherwise that we can bring forward that'll help us very quickly. I have an idea for the fear, just I may need some of your help, Kyle, when it comes to making sure we don't tax the resources of this place, uh, but at least to prepare some of the warriors here for battle will be important. Happy to help. All right, I'll go and see what the galliards are saying. I know I, I have a gift that can, a gift I have a gift now that can draw out worm creatures to the sound of my howl. Perhaps we can use that in the initial confrontation with the hive, draw them out into an ambush or something. I will go listen to the other Arun, as you have instructed. If you have any other ideas, William, it was just the first thing I thought of, and where your expertise lies. We would need to be. We would need to hit them from both sides of the veil. Are there any gifts that allow others to strike across the veil? A very powerful guru, theurges, yes, and spirits. I'll look into it. Good idea. Great. Otherwise, we would need to know what resources we have available to be able to plan out accordingly. If anyone is hiding any resource for their own, then plans can fall apart rather easily. I think we'll look past some infighting around here when it comes to a threat like this. I hope. I hope so. The glass is half empty, right? I'm just being realistic. We should likely also consider Korra's rank challenge, the logistics of such a thing. We certainly wouldn't be able to just bring these kin back, and I'm sure rescuing them is not just setting them back on the street. So transportation. I'm sure many of the glasswalkers would be able to help with such a thing, um, but considering they likely took a moon bridge here, perhaps do we not. not. Al- do we not already have a truck? We could use an unyielding road, I'm sure, if we can get him in time, because he's with uh, the kin right now, right? Certainly. Just, you were asked to rescue what will be a minimum of six people. Yes. It's just the thing to consider. It could be as many as ten. Who knows how many pups they have. And we likely shouldn't stop at five kin. Yeah. If if there are more, we should save more. As much as we can, yeah. Definitely. I feel like this challenge probably takes me out of the fighting quite a bit. Trying to get everyone out. Not necessarily. 
if you're able to put them out of harm's way, you can maintain the front lines and then come back for them later. I don't foresee this fight happening more than 24 hours. I would assume that you would need to be one of the first in, because definitely they could certainly choose to kill those pups rather than let them fall into our hands. Yes. Same with the kin. So uh, unless you are at the forefront of the fighting, you won't have the opportunity. And given the hazards of the chemicals in that mine, I think you're taking them with you. I don't think you're going to be sending them back up the surface to wait in a truck. Yes. So, and that's one of the reasons I felt I would be not completely out of the fight, but a lot. Just because if I am, if I am taking them with me, right? Not just sending them out, sending them to run. Then any fighting that is still happening behind me could be a danger to them. And so I would have to help them, uh, help them get out of it. Does that, am I making any sense? I think they're only getting out if we win. I would just focus on the fact that we need to win. Otherwise, it's not going to matter. And the victory might come at the cost of your challenge. Yeah, which is all right. We can secure an area as we would need to for our wounded and our hurt and probably leave them there. But they wouldn't come all the way out. I would maybe talk to the others here for their plan if they have any idea of what it looks like of a place that they might choose predetermined to be a spot that if we go beyond it that would be the spot we would use to secure i do have another idea we could have small strike groups going in to cause havoc and chaos in different sections of their hive while we run through one or two of their entrances with the rest of the army it would cause havoc and chaos on their end disorganization and with that allows us to get the upper hand there's something to be said for distractions and a feint i would just keep in mind too though that you're facing off against an enemy that places no value on any of its chattel that it is subjugated to their will if they don't value any of the people that they put under into their service they're going to be willing to sacrifice a whole lot and some sudden distractions don't mean for much They'd have to be really damn good to probably make them think that that was where the force was coming from. I don't think it's a bad one. I think it's one that had to be pretty, it had to be a good sell for them to buy it because of how monstrous those things are. That said then, perhaps I can gather a few of the galliards and a group of us could howl together to make them think we were attacking from one side and use that as a distraction. If it works out, we could draw them out that way. He does mention something, though. The idea of them being, for instance, engaged with gunfire would be a hell of a thing they might not expect. But remember, there's lots of us here, not just us six. I have some things I'm going to talk to the to the theater just here about. One of them is making sure that we're prepped for battle. The other one is the possibility of maybe something we could do to mask our movement. But the point I'm uncomfortable with is the idea that there might be just plain old normal people that are going to bingo night that are going to get slaughtered um, when the Gru army comes rolling to town. And while we can say very bravely and thump our chest that people die in war, it's still really horrible when it's a bunch of normal people that aren't infested by Banes that were just going out in public and got killed. Much as the aggression of our counterparts is admirable as they will be willing and able to destroy the worm. I'll link back with you all later. Keegan, I'm going to start rounding up some of the other theaters, and maybe even Louis if he's around. Okay, sounds good. We'll start off with Dimitri, though. Dimitri, as you start listening to the other thirges, you do get a name right away. As you hear one of the galliards from Desert Snow speaking up, saying that this hive is a dangerous one, for it seems that Galthrag Plague Simple Kiss calls it home and is the elder of the Karen. And he has taken on a ward of some kind. She has given him a kingly gift, a clave whose spirit was corrupted and handed to one of the worm's servants. Some speak of it being a strange Garu, other rumors are not so sure. And they talk about how Plague Sweet Kiss released an entire plague in a small mountain community several years ago when he was still a young Thurge and wiped them all out. The plague wiped out all the adults, I should say, 
and he took the children to become spiral kin. It is said this is how he helped build the hive in Cripple Creek once the children grew up. Are there more stories that the Galliards are? There are. There's also tales of Whip Tongue, a strange Metis whose tongue is forked like a serpent and he is taking gifts to allow his tongue to extend out and strike like a spear. It is said that Whip Tongue is a ragabosh and is taking gifts that allow him or her or them, no one's quite sure, as few have survived Whip Tongue, climbs onto ceilings or high places and uses the tongue to strike from above or to strangle enemies in close, close proximities. Zeb, you start collecting several of the younger Thurges. There's plenty to choose from, as it turns out. <laughs> and they all start to gather as there are several Bonars, a few members of Older Brother, some children of Gaia, and the like. Right, time is short. We're going to need to work together here to prepare our warriors for battle. And a few things immediately come to mind. There are the poultices of Gaia's breath that we might deliver to our warriors when they are wounded to allow them to continue through battle. Also, for my people, surely you've heard the war paints applied to camouflage themselves to fight. Yes? I'll kind of like look at the many eyes staring upon him. One of the members of Older Brother raises her hand as she goes, Excuse me, Aria, uh, do you not mean the the wax, the wax paints that are dripped upon the body so that it protects you from the elements that you fight? I'm kind of, you, yes. We forget when working together that many people have a unique solution to a problem. So yes, wax, paint, dirt, mud, chalk. Those of us here, we could find resources that we have for ourselves or for others. I will help you in any way I can help one another. There are certainly spirits both with your totem and your packs that you know far better than I. My voice need not be the one that speaks, but we can work together to get our warriors ready. So that Rhea. very thing, others. Yes, yes, one another. One of the Bonars raises their hands. Rhea, if that is the case, where is the closest dumpster? For I don't know anything about wax, but it is the Bonar tradition to use trash or other things to give ourselves camouflage. But is this mine urban or in the wilderness? For if it is in the wilderness, then where is the closest farm or ranch? For it is dung that we must use to create the paints. Fortunately, here where you are is both the delights of dumpsters for the many tourists that pass through this place, in addition to the dung of animals that exist here too. Both are at your disposal, and he'll describe the terrain as far as what's around the mine. All of these are at your disposal. Yes, also that. Anything you have, unique or otherwise, I don't intend to limit the possibility. Time is short, and as I said, I will only help in any way I can to bring the spirits here that are favorable to us, with the things that we have and can find and use them rapidly again for our warriors are the things that come to mind are those that you are unique enough or gifted enough to carve the talons of your warriors or otherwise as i said a few things of mine come to mind knowing the rage that courses through the bodies of our own the difficulty of being the theurge in any pack but the faster we get to them then we can harden our warriors and get them ready and we can Rhea, get to work Rhea, closest Another. place that it's the same one then if that is yeah. the case Rhea. Then I have one other question. What is the closest place that has any kind of sort of association with hiding of stealth? For it takes a chameleon spirit to create the talent that I am thinking of. Indeed. Let me give a general lay of this area and where it would be appropriate to find that animal, just having walked it. Where we are here now is near a large national park. The, the ecology is diverse. What you are looking for is available to that end and I can help you go to seek it out when you bring it forward. Otherwise, journeying into the city is some time, but can be done too. As I said though, here and now when it comes to finding things discarded by both humanity and the things we need in nature, we are at least in a location that is unique enough and diverse enough to make that happen. Understood, Ria. Anything, anything else? Please, any way I can help. You're helping me. Let me Ria. know, I'll talk to other Adrian. Yes? Rhea, where is the closest part proximity of the Karen that we are allowed to, where the gauntlet is weak so that we may summon and create talents? That's Edge of the Bond here. Is that the, uh, 
Is yeah, you're the... on the edge of the barn. So that that be that be our limit. You might be able to convince. You might be able to get some of the older brother ones closer to the heart of the Karen. Okay. All right. For some of the Ectene here, we can speak to the elders. The rest of us will be working here in the barn. Understood, Rhea. Let me know if I could be of help. I'm going to see others that I can find to gather to this. If more theaters come, the same thing. Gather them together, what resources we can find. I'll have my own pack do the same. Um, I have a Bonar and both a... And he will also help. There'll be more. Thank you so much. All right. William, what you doing? I'll be walking around, talking to other Aruns, trying to get more tactics involved with what the plan's going to be. Okay. You start doing that as you see Snipes in the Darkness kind of talking. William, good to see you again. Good to see you too, Snipes in the Darkness. Snipes is fine right now. I'm going to speak quickly. I understand. Anyway, my point is, is that the spirals have access to these chemicals. What we need to make sure of is that we have either a Bonar or anyone else who has Resist Toxin, the Fianna as well, within every combat group. This way that they can try and take the brunt of that poison and it will not affect them. As you hear the you hear Storm Chaser go, we cannot also rule out the possibility of betrayal. This concordant call has been going out for months. It is no small stretch of the imagination that some of the word got out and the spirals will be trying to tactically use these chemicals against all of us. I will also speak out during the main war council to this end. You have my permission. Anyway, what are you thinking, Rose? I spoke with my pack and we had a couple ideas. As you also are aware, one of our friendly packs from Maury's Bane is also going through a rank challenge during this concordant. Yeah, we heard. Called out to the whole Karen Bold of her. I'll give her that, but get a Fenris and all that. Anyway, uh, what, what do you think in regarding to that? We are looking to, at least my idea was to send in small strike groups to cause chaos and confusion and throw off the direction of the army that we're, that's going to attack. We also came up with one of our one of my pack mates can call worm creatures or to attract worm creatures so that way we could catch them by surprise we also thought about attacking from across the veil so if we're in the umbra we could strike in the physical and vice versa possible i think we have a few thurges here that have that ability i think the call might be good as it just gets them out of their hive and they're not on 100 percent on their home turf strikes could work too but depends on the size of this hive right mm -hmm. sounds like it it is a shot in the dark depends on how many spirals they have too what are they reinforcing themselves with so we know when we defend our own karens that we have kin garu and spirits spirals have garu i assume kin spirits but do they also have access to, or it sounds like from your friend, they have access to Fomori. Do they have access to other worm beasts? Are we going to run into any skull pigs out there? What about thunderworms? Based on Korra's description, they weren't there before, but they've been sitting for two years. Also, do they have access to moon bridges that they could bring in from other hives? I know moon bridges are distinctly Gaian. They're Luna-based. They have something else. They have wormholes, which dive into the ground and act similar to moon bridges, but you've got to crawl through radioactive tunnels to get to where you want to go. Still, they have access to similar abilities and yes. resources. Agreed. We could be facing a hive with the same numbers as us, if not more. It's true, especially if betrayal as Storm Chaser here said, is a real possibility. I'd also heard that there's a Pentex guy over there. Don't know how he's surviving under the damn chemicals, but some guy named Maxwell. You believe Maxwell is there? Someone named Maxwell. Uh, do you know him? I don't know him. I just know that we have 
friends that can track and gain more information just based on the name alone. Do you have a last name for Maxwell? Yeah, just just Maxwell is all I got. Who it goes by. Also, someone, some, uh, some up and coming ragabosh, father slayer, father killer, something like that. I'll take that oh. back to my pack. Sorry, feeds on families. I'll take that back to my pack then, see if they can get any information off of that. Would we be able to strike from above? We can try. Uh, we have some, we have some of the metis here who have burrow, but they're gonna have to dig through a mine or city streets to get there to strike from different angles. Not a not a bad plan, but be cognizant. We and actually, I think that might be a good a good one. We can set up a couple of metis outside city limits to try and burrow into the hive itself. And they regenerate in all their forms, so whatever poisons on them will slow down the regeneration, but it won't kill them. Is there any way to absorb toxin? Well, that is the gift I, resist toxin. I know we have resist toxin with the bonars, but is there any way to absorb it and nullify it? Well, not since the Grander and the Garal went extinct. Flashbacks, William. <laughs> As you just remember, killing a Garal in that other world. Roll me a frenzy. God damn it. And what's the difficulty? I'm about to find out. Because it's based on the moon phase. Oh, you poor shit. It is a full moon, so it is difficulty four. It's not a thrall. So I'll spend a point of willpower not to frenzy. Okay. As you kind of shake briefly, as you're in lupus form without even realizing it, and everyone kind of looks at you, as Snipes goes, William, are you all right? Flashbacks from spirit quests. I see. We could do some rites of cleansing to cleanse some smaller areas, but a greater one would have to, there'd have to be a greater rite of cleansing and other rites done after it was cleared out and removed what was causing the taint before we could do a large scale cleansing of the area and the toxins within the earth. Okay. And would we be able to command the spirits that might be there? I believe one of our friends um, guides the fallen has used that a couple times command spirit can work on banes but one must be careful as banes will maliciously comply and will likely do things you did not expect nor want when you command them so treat it like a monkey's paw and be very explicit in the command you can but the command is usually limited to about a sentence or so Cora also brought up an idea of once we set up a forward location, we can set up a triaging area for our wounded. I agree with that. Perhaps we should do a triage area just after whatever entrance we burst in through. Or if we burst through multiple entrances, we set up multiple areas using thurges to cleanse specific rooms or specific spots. Meanwhile, Cora... What are you doing in all this? Well, gonna talk to some people about setting up triage areas. Okay. You start going around as you see Guts the Week. Two <laughs> hearts. Guts the Week. Though your your name might be an answer in and of itself for this question. But I was speaking with my pack and with the Ill Omens and one idea that had come up was that we need to set up basically triage tents, triage areas at the rear of the of the fighting, maybe even outside somewhere away from the fighting so that we can bring our wounded, heal them, and possibly they, we, they could get back to fighting. And it is also slightly self-serving. I might be able to bring my, my charges for my challenge there as well. I was curious your opinion on that idea. Hmm. I agree that we need a place to deal with our defeated. There are many of the lesser tribes here and their warriors are not to the same caliber as the Ged of Fenris. In addition, there are Cleoth here, many Cleoth, and Cleoth 
even get a Fenris Cleoth will shatter upon some of the spirals that are said to hide in that hive. So triaging is a good idea. Having Thurges use their mother's touch or using Gaia's breath to heal our own. Even if you came to this for a selfish reason, your rank challenge, it is a good one. It is good to see that you have a spine. <laughs> Thank you. But also, you mentioned given the given some of the names I assume that you've heard of the Black Spiral Dancers. I was wondering, what are some of those names? The biggest uh, one have... is Galthrag, Plague's yeah. Simple Kiss. Galthrag uh, is a powerful Thurge, and I've heard the, sh the Shadow Lords talking about the potential of betrayal, which is always on their mind, given how often they do it. But if there's a Thurge of Galthrag's caliber there, then he can use his powers to strengthen Banes, make them greater, beef them up before an invasion. Or if we attack and he is towards the heart of his hive, he can start beefing up his Banes quickly and even strengthen the totem spirit by channeling his own Gnosis and increasing their rage, their willpower, and their Gnosis to make them terrifying creatures. Is is that the only name that you've been given? Uh, we have a a pack mate who is able to track, and so it might be of some help to figure out who who's there, and you know, kind of figure out how many people are there as well. Yes, I have also heard of your monger's son, a fallen get of Fenris, who has joined the hive. Wonderful. I do appreciate your help. Two hearts. That's the week. Fight well. You represent us all. That's the plan. And if you become Athro out of this, perhaps I will get you something nice. As a congratulation. Proving yourself, rather than just being Final Day's lapdog. I always look forward to proving myself. I'm sure you do. Heal. Goodbye. All right. Kyle? But he huh? will go around gathering names... And okay. then, in particular, finding people who also have the gift Pain Chain, and people who have the gift, uh, what is it, Pulse of the Prey. So you do find a couple Galliards, you find, I'm sorry, you find a couple Ragabosh, and you find several children of Gaia who have the gift. As you bump into Dimitri and Dimitri, you see Kyle after you've gathered some names. Kyle, I've, I've gathered a few names of the Black Spiles that are expected to be in the Hive. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the first is Galfrag Plague Simple Kiss. Uh, from what I've been able to, to gather, he's a an elder of the Spiral Dancers. And he... I've heard about a few of his deeds, uh, but it was shared with me that he carries a corrupted clave. So that may be something to keep in mind. Uh, and the other is Whiptong, a Metis Ragabash of the Spiral Dancers. And he uses his tongue, his forked tongue, like a weapon. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, horrifying. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Which one do you want to try it on first there, Kyle? Well, I think, Galthrag being an elder, it will not help me much to find the person who is above him. Uh, so I'll go for Whip Tongue. All right. Oh, uh, and I'm also going to activate my uh, Lagomorph Spoon first. All right, roll for that first. All right, you can convert two botch or two ones into not ones. All right, so you get two positions, right? Yeah, so the one above them and the one above them. Cool. So you get their alpha, uh, who is known as Bleeds the Eternal Corpse, and above that, Galthrag. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> what is the name of the spiral that Kyle knows that we fought? That spiral, using your eidetic memory, was Onyx Claws of the Worm. All right, then I will do them next. Okay, all right. You get Jormungur's son, and then it goes all up to Galthrog. Okay, uh, then otherwise I will continue to gather names and... I will start to also give out these names, minus the ones that I know their position, 
to the others that have pain chain. Okay. And they start doing the same as one of them, one of their eyes gets wide. Gaia, save us. How far did you see up the chain, brother? Well, to their elder, Galthrag. I saw Galthrag and then saw one further. Thurifuge, the master of stagnation and the lord of disease. Their elder serves a Melgen. Is that the kind of thing we might expect to find there, physically? Or Doubtful. Very doubtful, but it means that there might be powerful other spiritual guardians. Well, important nonetheless. Thank you for your find. Of course, we'll continue to go as one of the Ragabosh mentions. It sounds, it seems to me from smelling that Galthrag isn't in this plane of existence. I'd have to go to the Umber to try and get something better. Okay, please go ahead and do so. I mean, if if the Elder is away from the Cairn, that could change what people think about what we'll do. Agreed. After several of your forays, you all kind of recollect as more, more planning is going on. Like, this is... The Garu are trying to get this right. As Cora, Kyle, Dimitri, William, and Zeb, you're all recollected as you're hearing... It's just almost a low roar, like you're by the ocean as so many people are talking at once. Even at normal volume, it's becoming difficult to hear and to parse out the sounds. And a few Garu have noticed as well and have frenzied and have started fights across the Karen because of the noise ticking away at their rage. Uh, really quick before we all group back together, um, uh, could I go ahead and maybe coordinate with some of the Galliards or maybe an Arun or two and probably sure. propose my distraction idea? So you, you do propose it to several groups. As some kind of agree, some think that it's a bit of a naive strategy, but they're willing to give it a try. Others think, given that you were given locations, some think it might be a good idea to use that ability in certain places and have Ragabosh scope out where the spirals come from to discover new entrances on the fly. Okay, I just want to kind of circulate the idea around and see what other people, other Garu think. Okay, other Garu definitely think there's potential. Ooh. As you all reconvene. Kyle, I've gotten a, a name or two that you can use to look up. Wonderful, hit me with them. Uh, they're not Black Spiral, though. It's a Pentex person. Goes by the name of Maxwell. <sighs> That's the only name you got? The other was Feeds on Family. That one, I believe, is a Black Spiral, though. Feeds on Families was also described as an up-and-coming Ragabosh. Other than that, I don't have much other information. All right, then I'll do uh, Pain Chain on Feeds on Families. Okay. No. <laughs> I don't want to botch because I don't know what happens on a botch pain chain. That's so fair. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna use both of my Lagomorph boon points. Okay. So no info. All right. I will then later pass that name on. Or to would you like others. to use your mulligan? Uh, okay. Yeah. Actually, that's probably a better choice, isn't it? Yeah. I'll I'll use my mulligan instead. Okay. All right. One. The person directly above. Feeds on Families is Logan Maxwell. All right, that that makes it a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> a wee bit. Yeah, uh, oh, wait. Can I just use it again on him? Like, yeah. Okay, then, yeah, I'll do that. Oh. You can use your Lagomorph you spoon now. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll use my Lagomorph spoon on that pit. So you'll uh, remove one of the ones, fail. but you yeah. just fail, so <laughs> nothing comes to you. Okay, that's fine. I will I will pass that name on to someone else. But do I happen to remember the Maxwell's first name if I ever learned it? Like if he it, had a name it, tag on and that uh, ability? You did, you... Yes, mostly because he introduced himself to Cora at the brewery that one time in public as Logan Maxwell. Oh yeah, when we were... Yep, when, I, when Cora was Sam. And... Cora Maxwell is there. The Maxwell. Roll me rage, please. Diff yeah. four. Actually, yeah, diff five happening. for Cora. Cora's raging. Um, I'm just. 
Oh, see. You don't know that. With I have nine a... rage. I'm fairly maybe. certain. I, I have eight. Maybe, maybe it's a, you know, maybe it's like you rolling damage. <laughs> maybe, but. So you okay. didn't frenzy. I don't frenzy. That's crazy. You, yeah. Cora, as you hear the name, you shift instinctively to Glabro before shifting back down to Hamid as you clench your fist. Just from our most re- recent interactions with Maxwell, would it be safe to assume that B is going to be with him? You can make that assumption, but I wouldn't call it safe. Okay. I'm, I mean, I kind of would make that assumption just based on the fact that they worked together to kill Shinigami. Yes. Like, they were both there for that. And the fact that Maxwell is hanging out so close to our home, I, I would make that leap. Yeah. The howls of the Concordant begin as our runes are getting ready to present, though, you, or gi- you guys are given basically about a couple more minutes to maybe an hour to finalize your plans before presenting to the War Council and the Concordant. Uh, I was kicking around a plan while we were looking into all of the names. I think we should send a group of maybe 20 Garu to the casino, where they'll wait until the attack begins. At the mine, in the physical, we would have Dimitri and others call the creatures of the worm, and then we would collapse the mine entrance onto them. And as that is happening, in the umbra around the mine, or if we discover other entrances, then the main force of Garu would enter. A minute later, everyone in the casino can move in. That they lose an escape route, it's the escape route that's most potentially damaging to our Garu. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it also draws, hopefully, the majority of their force in that direction. Where the majority of our force is, sure, but it means that we have a better chance of actually getting in and deep easily so that rescue can be affected. And I mean, if there are better entrances, then we can use those and still collapse the entrance to the mine, but we won't know that until later. Definitely. After you hear the plan, Cora, and agree, the howl comes for the Arun to present. As you go up and get to do your favorite thing, public speaking, as the other Arun gather and get ready for the war council. But we will find out what happens there next time. Thank you to everyone who listened. We will catch you in that next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.